You're still listening to Hot Facts with Zoe and Chooks, and it's reaching you on the number one talk news and sports station, 99.3 Nigeria Info. Zoe and I still in the building, and today is going to be a special day. Of course, uh, normally at this time you will have the sports crew, but like we say, in Africa, a big masquerade just entered the the market square I'm scared. and when that happens <laughs> well do do? everybody comes out to play and uh, we'll be introducing the big masquerade as i call him but you know like they say it's some things are better done uh, by the ladies you know there's something about the feminine voice so i'll let zoe do the honors and you do know what? When you have the Director General of the German Radio and Television Corporation, namely known as Deutsche Welle, you have to stay back and have an extra time on your belt. We want to make welcome Peter Limbo. Good evening and welcome to Hard Facts on 99.3 Nigeria Info. Thank you, Zoe. At times like this, I wish I could speak German. I'd have been more comfortable. I'm sure that's how it goes. It's easy to learn, don't worry. <laughs> I'll take classes, I assure you. I'll take classes. So, is this your first time in Nigeria? It's my first time in Nigeria, and uh, I just arrived today. I like it. It's uh, it's lively. I love the traffic. So, <laughs> no. it's, a, it's a great city. <laughs> wow, that's, that's refreshing. You love the traffic. Yes, I mean, uh, you have your, all the time in your life. You can relax, mm. so it's fine. Is it similar to traffic situation in Germany? Not not quite clear, but sometimes you always have these traffic jams uh, in the bigger cities, um, but not as uh, big as here. So it might be the biggest traffic jams in Africa, so congratulations. <laughs> All right, uh, well, we're going to show you, aside from the traffic, you're going to have great fun in Nigeria. It's a fun place to be at. I, I've traveled a couple of times. I always miss home. Uh, but now back to uh, the matter of today. You, you are the director general of Dosha Vela. Uh, I'd like to ask, you know, tell us a little about your station and um, what you stand for and what you try to propagate globally. First of all, we are an organization which is quite old, more than 60 years, and um, our task is to be uh, the reliable source of information for everybody who wants information not only about Germany and Europe but also about the region he's living in. We consider ourselves as the voice of freedom and democracy and we like to be with our television, radio, online, mobile offers now much nearer to our customers, to our users and uh, so we are here in Africa to tour a bit and to learn what the African users, especially the Nigerian users, want to know from Deutsche Welle. Because I think that Germany, for the moment, is uh, quite demanded and a lot of people are interested in Germany. I'm glad you mentioned demanding, how demanding, but then you should please expatiate on the challenges the broadcasting industry, you know, you're faced with internationally. What is it? Well, first of all, we have a lot of competition. I mean, we have uh, had the time 20 years ago where on TV segment, uh, we and the BBC were the only ones. And nowadays, you have uh, more than 30 international English-speaking uh, television outlets. So the competition has grown harder, and so we decided also to to be more competitive. And uh, so we changed a bit our offer. We now have a new information channel, an English information channel, okay. EW News, and uh, it's nice to watch. Talk to us about, you know, let's talk specifics. You know, you broadcast to 60, 100 million people daily in 60 countries in 40 languages. How demanding is that for your station? First of all, I would love that it would be daily, but it's weekly. But um, oh, okay. um, still, it's a lot of people who are listening uh, to our radio and TV offers and are using our mobile um, offers. So this is demanding because we have so many languages and you have to have... Uh, uh, you can't just produce one Deutsche Welle content and then it fits for everybody. Because Africans have other interests like South Americans or people in Russia. So we have to have specific offers for everybody. And now we have uh, for years and decades already our language offers for uh, Hausa, um, for instance, in Africa. It's a strong service which we, which we offer mobile on radio. So I'm, I'm quite pleased that uh, we get more into, into the regions and have uh, local correspondence and uh, have also, of course, our German and European views, 
but mixed with the African reality, and so we get a better picture of Africa in the whole operation. I see. But then, still sticking with demand, how, why, why did you decide to launch the English television news channel? Well, English is the most speaking, uh, speaking language in the world, and um, so we reach uh, nearly, we, possibly, we could reach more, more than uh, one and a half to two billion people. And so we think that also the, the competition in, in the question of values um, is in the English language. And so you reach a lot of people. And, um, but this doesn't mean that we only are strong in English. We also have an Arab and a an Spanish and a German television and uh, 11 radio languages. And as I said, we want to keep uh, on doing more in especially the African regional languages like Hausa or Kiswahili. You talked about Africa. You've mentioned Africa. What you intend to do by including, uh, you know, uh, African language, expanding on it. Let's look about. Let's talk about African content. It's a TV station, and uh, people will be watching. How much of African content do you intend to include, spe specifically? Well, we have uh, one hour live daily in our program, which is directed to Africa with the African content. Not only African content, but a lot of African content. We want to expand this. We have uh, more than 100 correspondents uh, uh, locally in Africa for radio and for, for mobile offers. And we, we also get now more and more um, Africans to work with us together. For instance, I just came from, from um, Kenya, and we have a, a well-known um, uh, correspondent and, and, and TV lady who's now working with us uh, in Kimani. So I'm quite happy that uh, this is a step, and uh, we, we uh, intend to do more for Africa. So you're clearly collaborating with um, African outlets. Any one in particular in Nigeria that you will be collaborating with, you know, talking about content? Maybe your channel. I'm just <laughs> okay, that's what so we why can't you? wait. <laughs> I'm just the manager standing beside, so I'm just waiting to get in talks with him. Oh yes, I see that. <laughs> One problem we have, uh, a lot of African viewers have about Western TV channels or news channels, particularly, is the way they portray Africa. Mm. Usually, it's the negative. What do you intend to do about that? Are you going to go with the flow or present something different? Original. So we, we basically, we, we can't just switch from 100 uh, to, to zero or, or the other way around. I think there are negative things in Africa. Everybody knows it. But there are also negative things in Europe or in the United States. So what we think is that we should much more present also the positive uh, developments here in the country, the, the, this uh, entrepreneurship, the, the, the good ideas of African people, the African champions. So especially we have a series now which is called Africa on the Move. It's a TV series and an online pro uh, project where we uh, show 90 African champions, people who do something to who change their environment in, in every, every possible way. And uh, I think this is a, a good step also to show that uh, the time when we just uh, broadcast from Europe and tell everybody what he should think and that Africa is a dark country and there's only crisis and diseases, this time is over. We have to show what's going on here and I'm, I'm really happy to see it myself, how much development is here in the country. Still, obviously, there's, there will rest problems in the continent, but I think it's a great thing that we can see so many positive developments here. So what will be your strategies? Are you going to be using African hands to um, propagate that gospel or you will be we maybe? Need, we need African colleagues to do okay. this um, because um, we have here now in Lagos uh, an office. We have two brilliant journalists from Germany, uh, Mr. Mr. Charles, Mr. Kreef. They are here in the country and we are the first ones in Lagos to open a bureau. But this is not the only thing we can do. We have to use African colleagues because they're much nearer into the culture. And uh, so that we did also in the past, we did it in radio. We couldn't do our offers without African colleagues, but we will now do it also in TV, much more than before. And I think this is the way our international broadcasters have to go in cooperation with African journalists, which are quite good. I mean, there is no doubt. Why should they be not better or, or, or even the same level like European colleagues? A, a lot of your competitors um, have allegiances, if I'll call it that, you know, they have former colonies down here in Africa who naturally tend to listen to them. That for them is an advantage. How do you intend to overcome uh, that disadvantage on your side? 
Well, Germany well, being a neutral country that really never colonized any African country. We did a lot of wrong things in our past, but at least mm -hmm. colonialism is not, not on the top of it. But um, um, So I think we have this advantage also at uh, being seen as non-biased, as somebody who is uh, neutral, objective, who is trying to uh, not view on countries maybe with a colonial um, uh, view on a country, but to just look at it like it is. And I think uh, this helps us in, in a lot of markets. The, the Germans have a quite a good reputation, I have to say, in, in ob objective journalism and being a good partner and not somebody who's trying to teach others. Okay, but still sticking with um, concerns and strategies, um, I mean, we are all faced with the cash coin situation. I mean, look at a quick, um, quick situation that's really not very good. So how would you um, try to generate content without you know, facing this challenge of money, financing the content? Well, money is always a challenge. <laughs> money will always be um, a problem. Um, we try to convince our government, and uh, I did this um, with a bit of success, that they should more invest into the, the foreign uh, broadcasting system and they started to do it. So we can't say that we have money um, without limits but mm -hmm. uh, we have a bit more than in the past and so I think uh, you have to convince politicians that international media is something quite quite they good. They need to invest in that some Yes, more. we need to invest in it, especially uh, as we have uh, a situation in the world which is, which is quite uh, difficult with all the crisis, not in Africa, but all around uh, globally. Europe, globally. All right. All right. We have with us in the studio here the Director General of Dosha Vela, and uh, he has been talking to us about a lot of things, uh, particularly also included in it is um, the launch of their English TV news channel. We'll invite Can a caller. congratulations? I don't think so. <laughs> so congratulations. I like it. Thank you. All right. We'd like to invite you. Just one or two calls maximum. If you have a question for him, you know what to do. Reach us on our numbers 01277-0993-2771-993-2772-993 and 2773-993. Toll free line. You don't pay. 08000. L Nigeria Info. Any questions for him before we let him go? That's correct. You have the phone lines and they are ringing already. Good evening and welcome to the show. What's your name? Hello? All right, you're welcome. What's your name? Timmy Tokwe. All right, go ahead. Oh dear, uh -huh. <laughs> and your airtime doesn't want you to do that, sorry. Hello, another caller? Thanks okay. for calling, Isaac. Thank you, Isaac. Very brilliant question, Isaac. Thank you very much. Did you get it? Um, just a bit. Maybe you can give me a bit okay. of Okay. He, he was saying, you know, now you're launching here, um, how much research would you be doing to relate your content to the people you'll be broadcasting to? I think you always should have do research, but we are not coming totally new into this country. I mean, we have a house of service, which is now um, more than 50 years on air. So we have a lot of people who are working here for us. and. Uh, we have great colleagues and we have corporations all over the country. So I think we are a reliable partner for this country and um, we have so many great Nigerians we've met that uh, I think there will be some of them who would be interested in a German perspective. Okay. Absolutely. We're out of time. We would, would have loved to take some more callers, but uh, we need to let you go. We know there are more pressing things you need to attend to. No, also. I think you should ask us <laughs> maybe some questions. Would you like to do that? I'm here for you. <laughs> no, you should be asking now. What do you want to know about A us? question or two, will they fill it? The question, uh, what, what interests me, how many people do you reach? I mean, this is a real big country. How many people do you reach with this, uh, with this great show here? 
Well, this is Hard Facts, and um, we're basically in Lagos, transmitting from Lagos. But of course, we have an outreach in other states. You can also watch us online. You can stream live and be part of the show. Um, I mean, Nigeria as a whole, we're about uh, 180 million, so you can just think and about And in that. Lagos, you have a 19 million population. Radio listeners are not up to half of that. Uh, roughly uh, a bit about 3 to 5 million, and we have about um, 600 all right, I'm corrected. Seven million, actually. Right. And we have, collectively, as a broadcasting organization, we have over one million of them. But as a station, Nigeria Info, we have about um, 1.5. Yes. Wow. On a daily. It's and getting I'm, even I'm being more. updated. I was still saying with one million, but now I've been corrected. It's 1.5. So, we are, so, we're, so we're climbing. So, so I will not ask another question, but I will make you a big compliment because I think the concept of this show is great. And you, you, you're, you're having humor. You're, you're lively. And I think you can, you can really bring information much better than just sitting there reading serious papers. Uh, this is a really great <laughs> show. Thank you for being thank here. Thank you very thank much. Thank you so much uh, for Thanks coming. for spending time on Hard Facts. Yeah, it was a pleasure. Thanks. Yes, ladies. Yes, we've had the pleasure and honor of speaking to Peter Lindberg, the Director General of the German Radio and Television Corporation, namely known as the Chevelle. Thank you so much for being on the show with us. Thanks. Hard Facts will continue after 6 o'clock, but for now, we head out for the news break. Do stay with us, Zoe and Chooks. We'll be right back after this.